Have you ever wished you could stay underwater longer? You've all been there, right? Your NDL starts to tick down and you think to yourself, I wish I just had a few more minutes. Well, there is a simple way to extend your bottom time and it is called nitrox. If you've heard of nitrox before, but you aren't really sure what it is or how it works or if you should even be using it or not, this video is definitely for you. In this video, we'll cover what nitrox is, how it helps you stay underwater longer and what you need to know before you actually start using it yourself. So with that, let's get into it. First things first, what exactly is nitrox? Well, nitrox is simply a higher percentage of oxygen than normal. So standard air has 21% oxygen and about 79% nitrogen. And nitrox is basically anything that is enriched from there, enriched air nitrox. So anything above 21% oxygen is gonna typically be referred to as nitrox. And for recreational divers, nitrox blends usually have 32% or 36% oxygen, though really anything from 22% up to 40% is used by recreational divers. Now, beyond 40% is for tech diving, and that's something we're not gonna be getting into today. It's a little bit out of scope for uh, our conversation. So for today, for recreational, let's think about 32%, 36%, or just, again, anything up to 40% oxygen. Now, by increasing the oxygen content, we are actually reducing the amount of nitrogen in our breathing gas. So if it's 21% and 79% in air, we are changing that to like maybe 32% and 68% instead. So that reduces the nitrogen in the breathing gas. And that's really important for one pretty big reason. Your body absorbs nitrogen when we're under pressure and too much nitrogen has things that limit your dive time basically. So if you have less nitrogen in your breathing gas, that means that you're absorbing less nitrogen every time you take a breath in. And that means you have longer, no decompression limits, shorter surface intervals, and some divers even say that they have less post-dive fatigue or they feel less tired after diving. I'll get into that in just a moment. But how exactly does reducing nitrogen extend your dive times? Well, let's go ahead and break that down. Now, the biggest benefit of nitrox is that it lets you stay underwater longer, but you're probably asking yourself, why? Well, let me tell you. So your body absorbs nitrogen during every single dive, right? As you're breathing, like I said, at depth, you have that pressure that's pushing nitrogen into your body, into your bloodstream, into your bones and things like that. The more you absorb, the sooner you have to surface. And we kind of refer to that time limit as your no decompression limit. Now, since nitrox has less nitrogen than regular air, like we just talked about, that means you can safely stay at depth longer without hitting that no decompression limit. So for example, if you are diving to 70 feet or about 21 meters, if you have air, 21% air like normal, that gives you a no-stop time of about 40 minutes or so. But now if you switch that to 32% nitrox instead, that would give you a extension actually up to about 60 minutes instead of 40 minutes. So you're getting 20 more minutes to explore the wreck that you're down there seeing, or you know maybe there's a, um, a reef or a cleaning station at 70 feet and you just wanna stay there a few more minutes and well, with Nitrox 32, you'd be there 20 more minutes than you would on just air if you pushed it all the way to your NDL. Obviously, that's all dependent on your gas consumption. That means that you have to have enough gas and your, your breathing rate needs to be low enough that you can you know, stay there for a full 60 minutes as well. And it's important to note that nitrogen does not make your air consumption better. Just because it's a higher percentage of oxygen, a lot of people think that that instantly means that their sac rate will uh, improve or something like that, or, or the rate in which they breathe their air improves. And that's not necessarily true. It, it could be, but that's more of a, a side effect and not something you should count on. You still have the same amount of air, same amount of gas, or you still have the same amount of gas as air, I should say. It's just a different blend of that gas instead. So it's important to know that. Using our example, saying that we stay down to our no decompression limit of 60 minutes instead of 40 minutes at 70 feet or about 21 uh, meters, that actually means that we absorbed less nitrogen overall. So that means that we actually have less nitrogen to off gas as well. So when we go on our surface interval, our surface interval can be shorter. So, you know, maybe we did 40 minutes at, on nitrox instead of 40 minutes on air. The 40 minutes on nitrox means we took less nitrogen in so we can actually have a shorter interval or surface interval between our dives. You know, again, that depends on your dive plan, how long you're at different depths and all that different stuff. Follow your dive computer or your table still, of course, but it's another nice benefit to know. Um, just like noting that feeling of tiredness that I mentioned. Many divers, uh, I, I joke with my friends about it a lot where I'll say, you know, diving, it, it takes it out of you, right? After a day of diving, you'll never get a better sleep in your life. Um, especially my open water students. I tell them, you know, hey, after your checkout dives, you're going to sleep really well tonight. And many divers feel this way, right? They, they actually report that they, they get quite tired after diving, need a nap, that type of thing. Diving with nitrox, there's 
No like definitive evidence or scientific proof about this yet, but anecdotally, uh, a lot of divers report that they feel much less tired after they've been diving with nitrox, especially with many repeated dives. For example, you're on a trip, you might be doing two or three dives a day, sometimes four or five dives a day. Um, by the end of the week, you are exhausted usually, but when people are diving nitrox that whole week, they say that they are less tired. Again, no scientific evidence that has been proven of this theory yet, but that doesn't mean that it's not true. A lot of people, again, anecdotally report this. Obviously, all of this sounds great. Nitrox has some awesome benefits, but it also comes with some important safety considerations, right? So let's go ahead and talk about that next. But before we do, if you're finding this valuable, consider subscribing to see more content like this. It helps me in knowing what kind of content you enjoy, and I hope it's something that you can share with your dive buddies as well. With that, let's talk about why nitrox may not always be the answer and what safety concerns exist as well, because it can't all be benefits, right? There's always trade-offs. So here are some of the critical things you need to know before you start diving with nitrox. And first is the risk of oxygen toxicity. So the higher the oxygen content in the nitrox blend, the more risk you have, I guess, of uh, exceeding a depth limit and then having too high of oxygen, which will lead to oxygen toxicity. So you actually have to watch your depth limits when you're diving. Oxygen under pressure, just like any other gas, increases what's called its partial pressure. 21% uh, air as you go down deeper and deeper, every atmosphere there, that's multiplying up the partial pressure of oxygen. And when oxygen gets to a certain percentage, then that actually can be toxic to our bodies. It actually can cause things like uh, central nervous system seizures and, and just bad, bad things. If that happens when you're underwater and you have a convulsion because you're having a seizure, you're probably gonna spit out your regulator, you're probably gonna intake water, and unfortunately, this almost always results in the diver dying underwater. Um, it's very rare that uh, oxygen toxicity or, or CNS or something like that caused from oxygen toxicity is uh, recoverable. If you're wearing like a full face mask, dive mask, that's one of the benefits of it, but um, I won't get too much more into that. The important piece is that you need to follow your maximum operating depth for the mix. So as a nitrox diver, you'll find out about this and I'll talk about the training in just a moment here. But just for an example, if you have nitrox 32%, the deepest you can go breathing that gas is about 110 feet or 33 meters, depending on exactly which scale you use and things like that. That's that's up for another debate. But just as a high level of kind of talking high level about nitrox, 32%, you can go to about 110 feet. So while you can stay there longer, the deeper you are, the faster you use your gas. So you might not see the benefit of the extra NDL time. So that's kind of one of the trade-offs that you have there as well. And then of course, also noting that you can't go beyond 110 feet. You do you might have oxygen toxicity, be at risk for CNS or some other issues, and um, it can be fatal. So you have to be careful with that. Now, if you are more interested in that, I cover calculating max operating depths and other nitrox calculations in a whole nother video, and I'll leave that up in the cards uh, and down in the description as well. So you can check that out if you're interested. Now, next, if this all sounds a bit complicated, uh, the next point is actually that you need a special certification to dive nitrox. And some people don't realize that, but you can't even have your, fill your tanks filled above 21% oxygen or just air, basically. You can't have any nitrox blend filled unless you show a certification card that shows that, hey, yes, I'm certified, I know what I'm doing, and I can have my tank filled to 36% or 40% or 32, 31, etc. So because of all the risks that I just started talking about, you need this special training to be able to use and fill nitrox. So a nitrox certification course will actually teach you how to plan safe nitrox dives, teaches you how to set your dive computer properly so it can tell you the updated NDLs, your max depths, things like that, um, and avoid your oxygen toxicity. So one of the most important parts of diving with nitrox then also becomes, you know, being able to verify what's actually in your tank and you learn that in the class as well. So you can't just assume that the mix is correct. You have to analyze it yourself before every single dive. You know, if you just think about it for a minute, if oxygen is toxic at a certain depth, you wanna know exactly what's in your tank before going on the dive. So that's where things like nitrox analyzers come in and they actually allow you to uh, turn on your tank and, and pass it over the analyzer and see exactly what the tank or oxygen percentage is in your gas blend, right? So it'll tell you, you know, 21% for air or 32% if that's what you're doing for nitrox. And you need to do that every single time so you can plan your dive safely. But how do you properly analyze your nitrox mix before a dive then? Well. That's actually what I cover in this video, where I show you step-by-step step how to analyze nitrox so you can dive safely every single time. Click or tap the screen now to check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.